Religion deserves a lot of the bad rap it gets. The religious voices who have thrown themselves in front of televisions and uh, television cameras and uh, microphones um, have squeezed themselves into political boxes, inflammatory boxes. So the rest of the religious world got very quiet, not wanting to be associated with that. And I, I really think it's diminished our, our public life and the, the nourishing um, and appropriately challenging role that religious people might be playing in helping us reflect on the hard questions of our time, you know, in helping us reflect on virtues as opposed to debate or political processes. So I pitched this idea for a radio show. This part of life that we call religion and spirituality um, is so much richer, so much more diverse, so much more fluid, so much more interesting than these few talking heads who we have to, uh, to, 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 to demonstrate, to model it. It was challenging to think about putting this on public radio in particular because we didn't have many models of, of letting religious speak, people speak in deeply religious ways that weren't uh, uh, proselytizing or inflammatory or exclusive. And I actually couldn't promise, I mean, I believed that it wouldn't be that way. I couldn't promise that it wouldn't be that way, but I said, this is too important not to try. So that was the pitch. And, uh, and then it was, you know, years of piloting and putting on a show here and a show there. And, and then ultimately we started this weekly public radio show in 2003. We did a series of four pilots in the in the winter of 2000, of 2000. These were hooked around holidays, which is a way to make it seem relevant. And it was really fun, and we did it creatively. So, so the first one was Labor Day, and, and we could get into, the, sort of open up this whole world of, um, of theological ways to talk about labor, you know, vocation, calling, um, meaningful work. What is that? What does that look like? How do we how do we discern that? So that you know that was that was what we did with labor. But those questions are not restricted to religious people. Those are universal human questions. And and one reason it's so interesting to be to be uh, posing them right now and thinking them through is that the 21st century is is throwing them all up in the air again. You know, and they're coming back down. We are restructuring our all of our institutions. Um, we are understanding ourselves in a whole new way to be connected to people and other creatures, right, all across the world. So, so we have a whole new, there's a whole new fullness of, uh, of contemplating these basic questions again. We're, we're redrawing the map of what it means to be human. And technology, of course, is this other tool we have for connecting. I mean, if, we can do crazy things with it, but but there, I, you know, I, if you think about how um, technology, just in these ten years that it's been a part of everyone's ordinary life, or so many of us, for so many of us, it is reframing our whole sense of relationship and friendship and community in this in this fundamental way. And I, I think that those are. Th those do lead us back to spiritual questions, um, however you want to define that. A another thing that's radically new for us is our proximity to difference. And, you know, in the 1960s, which is not that long ago, um, diversity in the United States meant uh, black people as well as white people and Catholics as well as Protestants. And, you know, kind of Jews entered the mix uh, later in the decade. And now, fast forward a few generations later, we, we, we have genuine diversity for the first time um, in, in every way. And with the loss of that homogeneity, I think that some of our tried and true ways, some of our tried and true assumptions about how we navigate change, how we uh, 
institute change, um, I, don't work for us anymore. But here, um, where we're revisiting these huge questions that are intimate and civilizational at once, that, that get at the core of our identities, um, these aren't questions where we're going to get on the same page, maybe for generations, maybe in our lifetime. So as much as we've talked about tolerating diversity, we haven't really learned to engage difference. And what we tend to do when things look irreconcilable is just give up or we keep replaying the same old debate. Are you for it or are you against it? And it's, it's poisoning our, our public life. And as a culture, we frame everything in terms of these extremes, even when most of us aren't at either extreme. So what I, what I feel like we've tried to do with On Being is create a hospitable space, a hospitable space where, um, where, where we can reflect, um, where we can value wisdom and beauty and contemplation as opposed to, and questions uh, and not just answers. And so that seemed to be a good foundation for also taking on this, this challenge of civility of how we engage difference, and how we engage difference um, without an expectation of resolving it. I'm Krista Tippett. Please subscribe to Thinker.